actual pump. It, it goes back and forth between the flow rate, so a percent for the flow set to 14, um, and then it tells you 5.8 gallons per day is what it's calculated. So this sensor here, right there, the your, switch, is your tank level monitor. It's an ultrasonic. Uh, monitors bounce the sound waves up and down and then communicate with conduit going back to the controller on the wall on the deep wall of the plant. Um, so from time to time, so for example you get a high, let's say you get a high sulfide reading or maybe a low sulfide reading, what's your corrective action? Your corrective action is going to be, hey, i got to increase the feed of the pump. So, I need to increase the percent and it feeds, right? So you're going to click the percent button. It also tells you the history. If you hold down the percent button and you arrow up, the pump's going to stop running. And at this point, you can click to the exact speed that you want to set it. And then you're going to click, it looks like a, I don't know, a thermometer with a water drop coming out of it. And that puts it back into the mode and puts it back into operation. Um, you got to remember to click that button because if you don't, it'll literally stay on that screen of what setting do you want and it'll never pump. So that's something to look out for. Um, if there's an error on the pump, this red light will come on. Also during startup, you'll see red and green come on. That's if the pump is just doing its startup process at that point in time. And you can make those adjustments. I noticed that you can't make, you can't turn that dial unless it's actually pumping. Correct. That's another good thing. Yeah, don't try to manually um, change this to the unlock position and change the actual stroke of the pump. So there's there's two there's two things. This is the percent speed, and this is the amount of. Let me just turn it off here. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, so what happens is we met uh, we met our goal for that cycle and now it's saying I gotta keep pumping. Yeah, you see that that's what I was saying, that's short cycling, yeah. Short that's what I was telling you about so we yeah. Gotta, we gotta change that. As soon as it smaller. hits it, it it feeds again and it goes, oh shit, kick them back on again. So that's part of something we need to fix. So Okay, back to this. So this is the amount of force it gives it to punch it in. It's a big dial. This is just the percent speed. So say we had a really long run to go, or you, you need more force, um, you got a high pressure tank or something going into, then you could adjust the force oh, going in. That's not the, oh, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was like the duration of the pulse, and then the percentage was like how fast it did it. Yeah. So I thought it was like a long like thrust, and it would push more chemicals in the higher you with that dial. But that's just strictly for pressure? It's just pressure, how much punch. Oh, uh, okay. So on the back of it, there's a, like, a little suction cup with a diaphragm, and it, it suctions in, in between. All right. So if you ever want dry, there's a bleed valve on here that you do have to open to get it to prime on the side. So that's just something to be aware of. Also, I've noticed that sometimes there's four, four Phillips screws on the back side of this. Over time, uh, if you start to see a drip oh, come out the... of the bottom, these Cause... screws lose their tension over time. Um, and the guys actually asked me to have a couple rebuild kits, a quote for some rebuild kits. So I owe you guys that quote to have like three of those on. And you already can see this, this seal here needs to be tightened a little bit. Um, Product. Um, so little things like that. Again, just slowly tighten because um, you don't want to over torque it because this stuff looks ripped and it's plastic. Um, other than that, this is your your discharge for your, your if you're going to bleed off. Other things to look for is make sure people don't close the valves when you. There's also a check valve in here, and then there's two little check valves in here, a little ball of check valves too. Sometimes those get clogged up um, or do fail with the spring inside as well. So check as well. Um, also show this on the video too, you have separate 
separate feeds for power supply. So if you change programming in the controller, just one of the pumps, uh, you can individually feed one pump from the controller. That's where those are. So Molly, Amin, Sulfite. All right, and then like I said, this is the this is the actual tank level monitor transducer right here, right? Correct. And this is the problem we had last time when it goes empty and you feel it. Sometimes it doesn't actually read that it went back to full again, and you have to power this down. How do you power that down? Oh, that's a good question. Let's go. Let's go power. Can you power it down from here? Uh, no. The power pack. So this is just a signal wire that yeah, goes back. Let's go back over to the controller. And we won't be doing this too much, but right now while we're manually filling those tanks with the sulfite and everything, we're, we may have to do so that. Those wires you were, we were just looking at connect over to here, and this is the power supply pack for those monitors. So sometimes it like doesn't read here, or you'll see zero or whatever. This top plug right here, the top right plug, is this one. It's for the tanks, and see how it goes to zero, and it resets. And then you should plug it back in and it should go back. Now it's, it's figuring out what it should be.